spoke from Philippians, and he talked about uh, Paul writing and saying, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and I press toward the goal, and we remember that. Okay. There we go. Okay, um, from Philippians 3, 12 through 14. We also read that this morning. These were some of our scriptures, so I'm not going to read it. This is a passage that some of you know, many of us know very well, right? Some of us have this one memorized, and it's Paul talking about pressing for the goal, but I want to remind you of something. We read this, and it looks and it sounds very personal. It's Paul talking about his own life. It's Paul talking about his striving and his effort. But I want to remind you this morning, keep in mind that Paul is not the author of this. Although this was his experience and this was his desire, he's not the writer. God is the writer of this. So keep that in mind this morning. And God the Holy Spirit prompted Paul to write down what he was telling him to write. So as we look at this, don't just look at, well, here is one man, a really good Christian, and this really good Christian, Paul, and I can never be like Paul because he's Paul, you know. Um, he, he wrote this, but I, I can't be like that. This is from God, and he uses a man, and he uses a man's experience, but this is a call to aim higher. It really is that comes from it comes from someone brothers and sisters if what is written here is only for a few special believers that are really really mature and the rest of us forget it this is only for pastors and bible school teachers and you know people like that then how pitiful this would be how discouraging this would be not encouraging but this is for us brothers and sisters it's for each one of us and so paul writes this and it's interesting because if you read this whole chapter, uh, I know some of you are involved in accounting this morning. This is, that's, you, you work with numbers and you do things like that. And if you read chapter 3, Paul is very uh, colorful in his language. He was so well educated. And the first thing he uses in this chapter, he uses accounting imagery. He says, I count this as loss. I, I count this. And it's very specific. It's accounting. There's the positive. There's the negative. There's, it's in the black column or the red red column, however you want to think about it. And then after he uses accounting imagery, then he uses sporting imagery. Some of you this morning, especially some of you young people, I know a little bit more about you. I know you are, as we used to say in China when I was there many years ago, we would say, you are sporters. We don't use this in Hong Kong, do we? But we would say that in China. Oh, you're a sporter, E-R, on the end. And so he uses sports language to talk about this, this pressing forward, and also, as Pastor Renee said, and as we've talked about, this aiming higher, which is our theme, right? But Paul doesn't stop there, and what he says next, he talks about this, and then, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Miss Michelle? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Michelle? There we go. Okay, I don't know if she's doing that or I'm doing that. Just however it works. Thank you. Okay. And then he goes on and he gives them some examples. And we sometimes read this and we think, wow, Paul must have been so self-assured or maybe even a little bit arrogant because he told people to follow my example. He says, this is how you aim higher. You press towards this. And then he tells them, follow my example as I do this. And before we think, well, Paul was really proud and arrogant, keep in mind that the New Testament letters and the gospel, it wasn't really in circulation at that time. A few letters had been written, but people didn't have all of this new, the New Testament that you and I have today. We can go to the Bible and we can look and we can read and say, oh, okay, this is, this is how I should live. This is how I should pattern my life. But they knew Paul and they knew his life and they knew other people and they saw their lives. And so Paul gave them an example to follow. You and I need examples, too. He gave them concrete examples. And we need concrete examples, too. So there's a positive example, but he doesn't stop there. And then he gives them a negative example, very vivid. How many of you have found sometimes a negative example is even more effective than a positive example? Have you ever found that to be true? Yes. It's like, don't be like that. Don't worry, <laughs> OK? And so he gives them this negative example of this is how you press on. This is how you aim higher. 
But then he also says there are others that are not aiming higher. There are others that have a different goal. And I won't go through all of that. I've taught on this before many years ago. But this describes people who are, by the way, who are religious, who are, as we would say today, they're churchgoers, okay? They're not heathens out some there. They're churchgoers. And Paul says, but this is how they're living. They're not, they don't have the same goals that I have and that others have. They're not shooting for the same thing that I am and that others are. And so he says, I, I'm, telling, I'm telling you with tears, oh, any time we look at these negative things, it should never be in hatred or in judgment. They're so bad. Paul gives us the example. It was with tears because he wants them to make it, but it seems that they're not going to. And he says, this is, this is what describes them. Their end is destruction. Their God is their own appetite. Their pride is in what they should be ashamed of. And then I use this from the Phillips translation to give you a different way of thinking about it. Look at the last phrase. This world is the limit of their horizon. Oh, how striking that is. This world is the limit of their horizon. Their treasures, their goals, and their priorities. Religious people, it, they don't go beyond this world, beyond the here and now, beyond the things of this life. And it affects every aspect of their lives. Now, most of us live here in Hong Kong, and I don't know about you, and I'm not knocking a city. I love Hong Kong, and God has made Hong Kong my home. And for some of you, Hong Kong has been your home since birth. And for others of you, you have made Hong Kong your home at other times. But one thing I have found out about Hong Kong, and I'm sure there are other cities that are exactly the same way, it's very materialistic, isn't it? There's such a, 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 there's such a pressure of this life. There's such a pressure of here and now and money and, and things like that. And I'm not, I'm not putting this city down over other cities. I think most of us would say, I feel that. And who knows, these days, maybe we feel it in most cities because that's the way it seems like the world is going. And he says, this world is the limit of their horizon. But the question for us this morning is not about 2,000 years ago. The question for us as children of God this morning, as we're talking about aiming higher, is this. Is this world the limit of your horizon? Some of you have never thought about that this morning. You may be just visiting here. You may not be a church goer. You may not have a relationship with God. And you just live your life and you try to do the best you can. And sometimes things don't do so, go so well. And you're trying to do good things for your family. And you want your kids to do well in school. And you want to do well in, in, your, in your job and, and in your future. And you want promotions and all of these things. And there's nothing wrong with the, any of these things. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. But our question this morning as we look at the Word of God, as we think about aiming higher, our question is this. Is this the limit of our horizon? Is this the limit of our view of what we're looking at? And if it's the limit, then we're in trouble. Because brothers and sisters, even though this may be all we see, this is not all there is. Because there's more. And that's why, as Paul says, we aim higher. And we keep on pushing. And Paul says... So he says, but we are citizens of heaven. Oh, this is when we all should go hallelujah and amen. He says, this world is the limit of their horizon, but we are citizens of heaven. Our outlook goes beyond this world, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, and I'm not just talking about, oh, well, oh, Pastor Jennifer, you're talking about one day in heaven. I'm living in the here and now. What about now? I'm talking about here and now, and I'm talking about the future. Because when Paul writes this to whom? To the Philippians, they would have looked at this and they would have said, ah, got it. Because Philippi was in the area of Macedonia and they were citizens of Philippi. But Philippi, because this is Philippians, okay? Philippi was a Roman colony. Do you know what that meant? That meant, although they were citizens of Philippi, they were automatically citizens of Rome also. Citizens of Rome. Rome was 700 miles away. 
It took almost two months to get to Rome. Most of them had never even visited Rome, but it didn't matter. They were still citizens of Rome, and they had the benefits and the blessings and the responsibilities of Roman citizens. So all of these Philippian Christians, when Paul writes this to them, prompted by the Holy Spirit, they would have said, got it. This is what it means to be a Christian. I'm living in this world, and I'm part of this world, but I'm not only part of this world. This world is not the limit of my horizon. I aim higher. Why? Because I'm a citizen of heaven, and that means I have um, a call. It means I have blessings. It means I have responsibilities. It means I have rights that people around me don't have. Why? Because I'm a citizen of heaven, and one day, I will fully realize that, just as perhaps one day they, some of these people would make it to Rome. But Paul says, they would, they, so they understood that. And so that's not just for them long ago. Brothers and sisters, that's for us this morning. Does that make sense to us? Yes. We live in Hong Kong. How many of you are citizens of Hong Kong? Real citizens. You've got the paperwork to prove it. Yeah? <laughs> I think I am. I have PR. I have permanent residence. Does that make me a citizen of Hong Kong? Yes, I can vote here. Okay, I'm a citizen of Hong Kong. But I'm also a citizen of America, okay? I vote, I vote, I, I'm there too, okay? So that's part of it. But more than that, there's something else that makes my life because Hong Kong is limited to this world. The U.S. is limited to this world. I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. You, if you are a child of God this morning, I don't care what country you're from, how much you love the country you are from, or how much you despair over the country you are from. Either way, you are a citizen of heaven. And aim, truly amen. So you and I aim higher, aim higher, and are, oh, and it's time to stop. But I'm going to stop with this. Is that not the fastest message, you've, shortest message you've ever heard me preach? You know it is. Enjoy it because it'll never be this short again. But... I close with this, and I don't even have, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out all the other slides, but I want to, I want to close with this. In, Colossian, uh, in Philippians 4, verse 1, in Philippians 4, verse 1, and it's not there, so don't worry about it. That's okay. When Paul comes to the end of this passage, and he says, we are citizens of heaven, and we're waiting a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to handle it all. He's going to take care of it all. So it changes how we live now. Let your eyes rise higher. Let your goals be set higher than just the things of this world. And then in Philippians 4, verse 1, this is how Paul concludes this section. He says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, this is how you stand firm. This is how you stand firm. How do we stand firm? We stand firm by lifting our gaze higher and by looking to Jesus and by remembering we're citizens of heaven. You see, if you and I get plugged into this life and this city and this world and this time, only when the storms come, you will be shaken. When bad things happen, you will be shaken. When things go wrong, you will be shaken, and so will I. But when we know and when we plug into, I'm a citizen of heaven, Jesus is my Lord, it lifts our eyes above the storms we are facing. I was thinking about Typhoon Mankut this last, it seemed like there was no way to get away from it, right? Sunday and mostly, mostly Sunday, at least where I was, the wind was howling, rain, water was coming in everywhere, and I was having to clear drains. But you know what? That's nothing. A lot of you were having to do that, and you had some other damage as well. And it seemed like that it was all around me. It was quite terrifying. We face storms of life that are equally, if not more, terrifying. Storms of life that are more overwhelming. Situations that we say, oh God, and we feel like we're not going to make it. And some of you are facing those things today and now. And you don't know which way to look and you don't know which way to go. And you look at all that's around you and say, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You're a citizen of heaven. And you're going to have to, through prayer, through getting together with God, through taking in his word and saying, God, your word says this, and fighting in prayer, 
And believe me, I am learning what that means myself in these weeks with what's going on. It's a fight. It's a faith fight. It's a prayer fight. But you got to fight. And you have to lift your eyes higher. Some of you are going through business difficulties now and financial difficulties and health difficulties. Get together with God. Pray. Get into his word. And you keep on, you keep on until you can lift your eyes higher. And that is how you will stand firm. Don't let this world be the limit of your horizon. We are part of this world, but we're part of something higher and bigger that is not, will not be shaken, that will not be destroyed. And God will keep you and me through the storm. God will help you to live a life that honors him and pleases him when all around you, everybody else is living as if this world is all there is. Parents, those of you that have the pressure of kids, uh, kids in school and there's the pressure to do this and do that and you've got to excel and you've got to whatever, get your eyes on God, get your family's eyes on God and let them learn and let them understand there's more than this and that's how you and I will stand firm there are bigger storms than Mankut, but we're citizens of heaven. Amen. 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 And we will make it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let me pray for you, and then, whew, let's, then we'll stop. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this celebration of your faithfulness to us and your goodness to us. 27 years, you've never failed us. And Lord, some of us, because we've known you longer than 27 years, even in the ups and downs, we also can say you've never failed us. You are taking us through. And so, Lord, we lift our eyes higher and we set our gaze upon you. We are citizens of heaven. This world will not be the limit of our horizon. And this is how we will stand firm in you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Can I give you some